Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer this Wednesday morning. My name is the Reverend Matthew Renyard. I'm a curate here in Weymouth, serving the parish of Radipole and Malcolm Regis. It's my pleasure and honour to welcome you to my study this morning and welcome to my home, uh, whoever or wherever you might be joining me from. If you're new here, then a big welcome to you. Uh, do say hello in the comments below. It's always lovely to interact with people. So let us pray. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. And glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with our heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning comes from Psalm 119 and it's verses 105 to 128. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfil it to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept this free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is ever in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your testimonies have I claimed as my heritage forever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I've applied my heart to fulfil your statutes always, even to the end. I hate those who are double-minded, but your law do I love. You are my hiding place and my shield, and my hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be saved, and my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You set as naught those who depart from your statutes, for their deceiving is in vain. You consider all the wicked as dross, therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is right and just. O oh, give me not over to my oppressors. Stand surety for your servants' good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes fail with watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. O oh, deal with your servant according to your faithful love, and teach me your statutes. I am your servant, O oh, grant me understanding, that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O oh Lord, for they frustrate your law. Therefore I love your commandments above gold, even much fine gold. Therefore I direct my steps by all your precepts, and all false ways I utterly abhor. O oh God, save us from ourselves from double standards and divided hearts, and give us light 
and life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Judges, and it's chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Later on, at the time of wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I'm going to my wife's room, but her father would not let him go in. I was so sure you hated her, he said, that I gave her to your companion. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. Samson said to them, this time I have a right to get even with the Philistines. I will really harm them. So he went out and caught three hundred foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs and then fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches and let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines. He burnt up the shocks and the standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines asked, who did this? They were told, Samson the Timnite's son-in-law, because his wife was given to his companion. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. Samson said to them, Since you've acted like this, I swear that I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. He attacked them vigorously and slaughtered many of them. Then he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of Atam. The Philistines went up and camped in Judea, spreading out near Leah. The people of Judea asked, why have you come to fight us? We have come to take Samson prisoner, they asked, to do to him as he did to us. Then 3,000 men from Judah went down to the cave in the rock of Etam and said to Samson, don't you realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? What have you done to us? He answered, I merely did to them what they did to me. They said to him, we've come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. Samson said, swear to me that you won't kill me yourselves. Agreed, they answered, we will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and led him from the rock. As he approached Leah, the Philistines came towards him shouting, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, With a donkey's jawbone, I have made donkeys of them. With a donkey's jawbone, I have killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was called Ramath Leah. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, You have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up ho the hollow place in Leah, and the water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned, and he revived. So the spring was called Enna Hakara. And it is still there in Leah. Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. One day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move towards him during the night, saying, at dawn we will kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, beginning at verse 15. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked him. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. 
Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honour your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to them, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible for man is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all we have to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reflection comes from that passage from Luke 18. We need to pause when we read the scriptures and remember the subtitles provided above familiar passages, added by well-meaning editors or fine translations, are not part of the original text. For example, the so-called Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel is not described as this in Scripture. It is just a commission, one of several that Jesus enjoins his disciples to heed. But there is only one Great Commandment. This is undisputably named and identified as such in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, and in the Gospels. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and second is like this. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40. The priest and theologian Urban T. Holmes III concludes his book, What is Anglicanism? with some simple words which apply to all churches and probably all faiths. All religions question merge into one query. What shall we do? Our course leads to living in the world as God sees the world. We can debate the trivial points, but the vision is largely clear. To love God is to receive the burden of all who suffer. The rest is a question of tactics. So, you know the commandments. Now work on the tactics. And remember, religion is basically kindness. God looks kindly on you. Go, do likewise on others and on yourself. And in response to everything we have just heard, let us say together the Benedictus. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord, prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. We now just bring our intercessions to God. And as I do so, when I say, Lord, hear us, please respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. So let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold. For the health and well-being of our nation, let all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And now we'll just have a moment of quiet so you can bring your own prayers to God. So we commend ourselves and for all whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me for another Wednesday morning prayer. I pray that whoever or wherever you might be, that you are safe and that you're well today. And I pray that you have a good day and know something of God's Holy Spirit in your life, guarding and guiding you this day. So take care and God bless. <laughs>